Welcome back, everybody. I think it's time for some open transport tycoon deluxe. Last episode, we rebuilt a bunch of stations and fixed the pathing on all of our busted trains. Now the only thing standing between us and our 500 train goal is a bit of expansion. And expanding we will do today on episode 9, the ninth episode. I'm going to start by rebuilding some of these junctions over by the factory. The throughput has been pretty underwhelming and it needs an upgrade. I can't do any big changes because of all the scenery we added last episode, so it took a couple attempts before I found something that fit. I mentioned in a previous episode that this southbound line that bypasses the stations was pretty much useless. I kept it anyway just in case, but I'm trying to fit a third northbound line through the factory area and we really need the space. That looks much better, but we've got a lot more work to do. I need to add a third lane to service all of our goods trains from both the sawmill and the factory. If you look at the northbound lanes here, you can see there's not much space left for any more trains. And considering that the ring road has three lanes, which also services all of these goods trains, this one only having two is a major bottleneck. And we get to expand the mega bridge as well. Now I had to reclaim some of the land from Chugtopia to fit this third lane through, but everyone was on the beach that day so they didn't notice. Now with the hardest part out of the way, I can continue adding a third lane for the whole southern half of our network. I'll have to edit a few junctions, but most of them are sideline hubs which are relatively easy to upgrade.
Well, that was a lot of work. But as a reward, we get to add some more trains. The production of our iron mines is finally growing. And the same is true for a bunch of our forests. There's quite a few trains to add all around. It's always a good feeling to know you can add a bunch of them without slowing down the network. The overflow for our steel station is unable to keep up with the amount of trains servicing it. I'm going to replace it with the same style of overflow I used over by the factory pickup stations. The overflow is having a much better time dealing with the traffic now. I want to prep this area for some decorating I'll be doing later in the episode. I end up doing quite a bit of terraforming, but it really doesn't benefit me in any tangible way. It appears all those trains I added did slow down the network. Both of our sidelines are jammed pretty bad. It was inevitable that I'd have to eventually double track the sidelines. I've been dreading this moment for a long time. Upgrading to a double track is a huge jump in complexity over a single track. At this point, I'm basically building a junction for every station. That being said, the sideline doesn't have to be as efficient as the main line, so I can underbuild it quite a bit. The sideline is moving again. Now I just have one other sideline to upgrade, and it has far fewer stations so it'll be a lot easier. Finally, it's done. Now our sidelines are flowing well and I can add as many trains as I want. Speaking of addition, it's time to do a train count. We've got 480 trains and only 3 are unprofitable this time. That brings us to a grand total of 477 trains. Yippee! Wait, wasn't I supposed to be doing something? Oh right, we're decorating the steel mill. Now I have to admit, I'm really not a steel mill expert. I know a lot of this stuff really isn't realistic, and though I do try to make the rails move in a satisfying way, they value functionality way more than they do realism. 
This does make it more of a challenge for me to decorate, but these things are much more visible in hindsight, and I'm speaking to you from a post-factory decoration perspective. If you're familiar with scenery set mods, you may have noticed that I've added a couple more. Here's the updated mod list. The bottom three mods are new to this episode. It's kind of annoying how many scenery sets I have to add just to get a varied set of items. I'm happy that the game supports scenery mods, but I'm overall unsatisfied with the implementation. There's a lot of friction in searching through 20 sets just to find one tile of scenery that you need. And the search function really isn't helpful at all. And in addition to that, some of the tiles have multiple sprites, so you have to find the set you're looking for, scroll through all of its tiles, and then spam the tile until you get the sprite that you want. The result looks good, but the process is a huge hassle. When I'm decorating, I spend more time looking for the tile than I do placing anything down. Anyways, that's my rant. Transport Tycoon, please fix. In the end, I think it turned out alright. There's some empty space, but I'm just not sure what to do with it. Maybe I should download 50 more scenery sets just so I can use a handful of tiles. The citizens of Chugtopia have caught on to my little house bulldozing scheme. I'll build a nice amusement park and see if they'll forgive me. The Chugtopia citizens seem to love their new amusement park. This whole area is almost fully decorated now. Really, this whole map has come a long way. I can confidently say that there's no more backups anywhere. That being said, there's really not much left to do, so I'm thinking that the next episode will probably be the last. After that, I might dip into some more long-form content. Sort of like this series, but wrapped all into one episode instead of being several. I've got a lot of ideas for challenges or absurd ideas I'd like to flesh out. Well, that's all I've got for today. I'll see you later.